It's the crack of dawn on Brewpeg. Richard's got up so that he can beat the heat in the engine bay because that's ludicrous. But look at this. Isn't that just the coolest sunrise? G'day, welcome to Project Brewpeg. My name's Damien. We're converting a sunken fishing trawler into a global research and expedition boat. We're community funded and you can get on board. Today, we're working on closing our hull up. This is what the coffer dam in Brewpeg looked like when we first got on board. We closed the hatch and didn't look at it for eight months. It was just too scary to tackle. Last week the guys got close to closing up the tanks at the front of the boat, this week they do it. Mostly air bubble. Yeah, it comes off pretty easy. But yeah. <laughs> Pass them up? Yeah, or just one. Yep. Right. More screws. Yep. Tight working space. The guys are putting the hatches on the tanks so that they can sandblast the copper dam and not have all the sand go into the clean tanks. I think they either fit or they're well off. I don't think there's any real close from memory anyway. Well, either I got lucky or this went way too easy. <laughs> and finally we're on to the copper dam hatch. Dane's sandblasting the rim so that he can weld it. So I just remembered we came down last night and I heard this very slight hissing sound and that there was ever so slightly letting the gas out of our bottle and then this morning that there we have zero gas so uh, operating hours for the place that sells us gas are about half an hour on a Saturday morning so we have to belt in there and, and get it now or else we've got no more work to do today. To basically strip down our um, wet sandblaster because for some reason some sand got in the nozzle backwards. It must have come down the waterline or something like that, so it's the only way it could have got in there. But basically what it was doing, so this is the actual end of the nozzle you can see right here, and the sand, you could sort of see through it now, but before you couldn't see through it at all. Um, so yeah, we just had to rip that apart so we can get into the cofferdam and start sandblasting. Hold up. So we've gone through, we've sandblasted. You sort of see the leftover sand and water and everything. Basically giving it a, a bit hard to see in that light, but giving it a quick clean up with the sandblaster. We're gonna get in there now and, um, sorry, with the water blaster, we're gonna get in there now with some soap and water and give it a real good scrub. Get rid of all those grubby, skanky old marks and give it a, just a, a real good clean up because it's easier to do it now than it is later on. There's some areas where the paint wasn't great, so we'll just rip that off again and I'll throw a bit more etch in. 
a uh, couple of areas where we've welded some things in where we had a little bit of surface rust that to be dealt with all up here around the rim on the inside it's a wee bit hard to see but on that inside there we've gone around and blasted so that we can get a nice good solid weld the whole way around and then we'll sandblast this outside edge or flapper it up probably more than likely all the way around that outside edge so that we can get a, a nice solid weld One of the challenges that we have to solve when we're gluing these access ports back onto the bulkhead is we have to make sure that the surfaces are really great condition surfaces. So what we do is go around with a file and just basically all the way around the mating surface, make sure that it's perfectly flat, there's no raised bits. You know, if we've bashed it with a hammer or done anything weird over the last couple of years, we want to make sure we deal with that. So we go around and we file it. it doesn't, we don't have to take anything off, we're just basically looking for high spots to make sure that there is no real garks or anything. Reason being is if there's a gark, it's gonna hold the plates out and we're not gonna get a really great seal around them. We want them to be relatively tight. We're using a stuff called Flame Master. It's a aircraft um, tank sealant, so it's used to basically seal essentially aluminum access ports into wings of planes. Um, and it dry, it's a two-pack and it dries a bit like a, a, a sicker or a sealant type thing, but it's a two-pack um, type sealant and apparently it's absolutely bulletproof so once you put it on it's not coming off basically um, so the plan is to do a small bead around the inside rather than do like a two inch bead all the way around we're going to do uh, maybe half inch something like that an inch thick something like that around the inside all the way around we've tapped out all the bolts we've buffed the bolts sorry tapped out the threads for the um, for the internal threading and we've buffed all the bolts everything goes in really nice and then we're going to put them in with a bit of copper coat or anti-seize <laughs> this is going to be interesting. bolts. Yeah. Keep feeding them. These are the original bolts. So Richard's gone through and buffed all of them. They're beautiful 1970s hard steel. They're awesome. Okay, you ready for starboard hatch? Yep. So now that we've got those two hatches in, we're going to nip them up. We're not going to bolt them up real tight just yet. We're going to get a little bit of time just for the two pack to kick. Then we're going to nip them up 
and we can leave that for about 30 hours. It takes that long for this stuff to go hard, but once it does, it's rock solid. So you can see that goo that's squeezed out between the plate and the bulkhead. That's the aircraft fuel tank sealant that we used. This stuff has the ability to have a massive amount of flex. Well, aircraft wings have huge flex in them, so this is going to take any impacts that we have. Um, it does make getting into these tanks a bit harder, and for us, you know, we can put up, we're not going to be getting in and out of these tanks very often, so um, probably once every three years. So if we have to go and, um, you know, slice this off and then sandblast the, the edge, we're really not that worried, that's okay. Um, but for us, we were really stoked with how this turned out, and I'd recommend using that stuff. So we've got an issue that I'm going to solve. I'll show you why we're looking at it. It's a bit of a safety thing. Um, it's mainly so I don't die when I'm trying to weld this cofferdam back up. So the deal is, once I weld this uh, cofferdam in, it's essentially a closed box inside the hull, and I'm welding right at the very bottom of it. So every time I weld, every time I squeeze the trigger, argon basically comes out of the uh, out, out of the nozzle. So Argon's heavier than air. If I keep welding with um, just letting the argon accumulate, I'm going to end up essentially making a puddle of argon at the bottom of this cofferdam and then I'm not going to be able to breathe. So this is my solution. This is the plate of steel that we're going to be welding in. What my plan is, is if I come over here, I've got this stainless nipple that I'm going to weld into it and I'm going to put a bung at the very bottom of this plate. The reason I'm looking at doing this is basically then I can strap my uh, like duct tape on my vacuum cleaner to the bottom of this cofferdam so as I'm welding I'm able to essentially extract the air from the very bottom of it and pull it out and it'll be going outside the hull so essentially I won't be able to accumulate a puddle of argon at the bottom and therefore I'll have constant air in that tank. We're also going to pump air in from the top but that's kind of irrelevant if I don't suck out the oxygen, the, um, the argon at the bottom putting in fresh oxygen at the top of the tank really doesn't make any difference. I know some of you might balk at the idea of having a hole in the boat like that with a bung. However, if you have a look at this, this is a bung here that's been in the front fuel tank for 40 odd years and it's been through survey every year of those. There's another one at the water tank just back there. At the front of Brewpeg there's four tanks and four bungs. There's another two tanks at the back end of the boat that have a bung each in, in each tank. Um, so although it is a hole in the boat, it's completely serviceable and it's completely safe to do so. Um, you just have to do it in a way that's not going to come loose. Because we're going into ice, we're going to protect these bungs as well. So if a big block of ice starts rolling down the hull and bashing into it, we're going to put essentially a deflector in front of each of these so that we can protect the, um, the, the cap from being able to come loose or be knocked off from ice. So Rich is just changing the wire over, so we've just welded this bung in with our 309 um, LSI wire, it's a bit of a whiz bang wire that allows us to weld stainless to mild steel, but one thing that we do need to deal with, you can see I've put these little marks randomly around this plate, these are where pits, I can see if I can show you, 
you see that's quite pitted basically goes down deeper than what I'm happy with so we're going to do some pad welding basically there's a couple of things that you can do so that's essentially that's corrosion on the inside of the hull um, that could either be caused by electrolysis or paint um, coming off and them just ignoring rust or there's lots of different reasons why but basically this boat had some corrosion on this panel on the inside of the hull so what we're going to do you can either put a new piece of steel in um, but because there's only a few little spots like this we're going to do what's called pad welding and you basically fill the steel back up to um, more than its original thickness um, and it saves you having to replace that whole panel you can just do the little bits that you need So in case you're wondering as to why this piece of steel had a lot of pit marks going on in it, I think this piece had been cut out before and welded back in and I'm not 100% sure if they actually did any real good painting on the inside so consequently it was just bare steel left to the elements. The flip side of this is pad welding it is a great way of restoring it. You're fusing two pieces of metal together so you've got the original steel and then the new steel that you're adding with the MIG welder. It joins the two together and then you're increasing the thickness. So this is a 6mm plate of steel and we're probably building it up to be maybe 10 or 12mm thick in some places. So it's a bit of a hot potch of welds over this thing now, but you can sort of see, come right down here, there's a fair chunk of metal over top of what was a, a sort of a deep pit. These pits are often, um, they look like somebody's got the head of a maybe a half inch drill and just drilled straight into the steel. They kind of go down in a like a triangular sort of pattern. If I come right down low, you can kind of see it's, it's very quite flat in terms of like plate size and everything now. Um, what the plan is now is we'll just go through and probably give that a quick blast just to clean off any rubbish and um, give us a final look at what that plate looks like and if we've missed any areas that we want to go through and do a bit more welding. So we started blasting and we ran out of sand so this is the blasted steel and then this here is the non-blasted steel um, so you can sort of see that there's plenty of um, extra new material in there now so what was a reasonably deep pit is, um, is not really a drama anymore. So we'll go around, we're not going to bother sandblasting the rest of this, um, we've run out of sand. We can just um, accept that we're going to put a bit more paint over those wells than normal. But uh, yeah, we'll get this touched into the hull now. So it's the final morning of this job. That's our hull plate. We need to weld that into the cofferdam hole. Now, this cofferdam, all the way around this edge, there's a 45 degree um, angle cut into that hull. And exactly the same on that plate there. What we need to do is just go around with a flapper and clean all of it up so that we've got really nice beautiful steel. The reason we have the 45 is so that we can have uh, essentially uh, three welds on the whole thing. So you have a root weld in the middle and then a capping weld top and bottom on the inside and outside of the plate. Exactly the same as when we did our fuel tank um, hull plating. A quick recap if you haven't seen our episode on plating up the fuel tanks. This is one piece of steel and then this is another piece of steel. Now you can see these 45s that are sort of cut into the edge of the plate on both sides. You then do what's called a root weld which is a tiny little weld in the middle just there and then you V that out with a grinder on both sides so you've got like a nice beautiful sort of area to weld and then you do a capping weld which is basically this big bulbous one that goes over top um, and the reason you do that is it's essentially a double continuous weld it means that there's essentially no chance that it's going to leak it's very very hard to get pinhole leaks when you do that okay i wonder if we should weld some tags on it or something like last time you know how we sort of hooked it in with some tags that held it yeah Probably the easiest way, eh? They're going to have to be pretty small for them to work. Yeah, I mean, that, that formula worked real well last time. Yeah. You're sick of we just weld these off the bottom. 
I think we're a go then. This stuff's like a wax when it dries. Could be very much like before. Uh, let's put something in there to create the gap, like a screwdriver. Yeah, or uh, or a uh, what do you call it? I got an idea. Piece of metal. Or Why don't I weld well, a piece up here so we don't have to hold it? We can jiggle it really easily. Now we can adjust it really easily. All right, let's do some fine tuning. My, my thought is initially we we adjust the bottom boom, gap, boom. tack it, and then knock that top one off. Yeah, and then start working. Work the edges up. Yep. Perfect. So let's let's just focus on the bottom gap first. Yep. So how should we get some sort of shim? Like, what are you thinking? Okay, all right. Do you want another screwdriver so you can do each each? That um, little one might be able to hook upside down on the, on the edges. It just won't stay there, that's uh, all. Okay. It's not going to sit there because it's not long enough. Do you want me to get you a long screwdriver? No, no, no. You're inside Dealey. Oh, right. That's it right there. All right. Are we gapped everywhere up top? Yeah, we're pretty parallel. That's got it. Yeah, we got a one mil gap at the top. All right, so I'll throw a tap. Oh, yeah. All right. So where are we flush? How do you think? We're flush over in the corner there, aren't we? Yeah, all of it is. I mean, the whole bottom, if, all the way across. If I tack that, and then we pull that in, this corner is going to go up, which is what we want, because it's slightly up. Like not enough to matter, but it's slightly up. Or oh, maybe it's just the weld that I'm seeing. You're seeing the weld. Ah, okay, all right. All right. Plate, the plates, the right. But maybe. Okay, one. Two. That's a pretty good 
ali. Yeah, Kaiba. Okay, so we need to weld up onto the hull. So I'll get pull. another one. That one's, we're going to break that as soon as we start flexing. So a trick we're using when we're trying to align two plates is we cut a piece of steel, bend it into a U. This is just a piece of three mil by 25 mil, something like that. We bend it into a U like that, weld this onto the hull, and then we can get a big bar in there and start levering the two plates so we can get them flush. Give me six inches up here. So more, 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 more. Yep, got there. Yep. Just keep going. This is this is just easy case. We have figured this out before. Yeah. We don't need to make a. Tell me when. More, 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 more. Yep. Uh, back fraction, uh, back in. We are good. Let's go to the other side. Yeah, let's do some more medicine. Don't even need the move it. It's awesome.
20 minutes left to do two hours of prep. Yeah. Can I slide that along actually the other side? Do that. Hold on. You okay? I don't know. Can yeah, I come back? Less, yep, less press. Really? Yep. Uh, in a fraction. Okay, wait. So where we're up to. So we're basically going around, we've got a bunch of tacks holding this plate in. It's all flush the whole way around, so we're really happy with the um, alignment and so on. So what the plan is now, we're gonna go around and just clean up those welds, V out where we need to and so on, and then we're gonna start running our, uh, our proper beads. So this is a pretty exciting day for us. Brewpeg hasn't been watertight for about four years and with that last weld, we've managed to seal this hull up so we're getting closer to our goal of dump and run. So we're about to start welding on the inside. This is our interior. We've basically got a welder stuck in Richard's room. I come through, we've got sheets everywhere to stop anything getting covered in garbage. But if you have a look down here, you can see we've sort of half cracked off the floor plate that goes down into the coffer dam and then we've got all of our cables going down into it and then basically we've got a vacuum cleaner sucking that room um, uh, into a vacuum and then all of the air that, that can make it into that room can go through that gap so with a bit of luck we're going to get decent airflow going in all of the argon sucked out and we're not going to get any smoke or smells coming up into the cabin so one of the drawbacks of welding inside the boat this orange cord is the extension cord for our welder and it comes around up into the wheelhouse and over the back, that plug over the back there is a 240 volt 15 amp plug which is a high powered circuit for Australia. Now the downside of interior welding is we can only run one really powerful thing which in this case is the welder. So our aircon's going off as is everything else in here and it's an Australian summer so it's going to get to, I don't know, 60, 70 thousand degrees inside this cabin. Do work? Yeah, I just keep forgetting about the bloody... Okay, got up the mask and all the other gear. Yep.
Can you back the wire speed off a fraction? Yes. Vacuum's gone. James used Rust Kill as a first coat and then two pack etch. When we first got brew pig, this is what the copper dam looked like. And this is what it looks like now. There we have it. So this is our finished coffer dam. So we've got our ladder, we've got our two hatches at the start, and then you see all the fittings down the bottom there, including the safety valve that allows us to check if we've pierced the hull open in the crash bulkhead. Over the far side, you can see the other two hatches.
So I had this issue, there was a little bit of weeping rust down the hull. I blasted the crap out of it because I wanted to know what the worst case was and there is a piece of rust right in the corner of the, uh, what is the anchor locker floor. So I'm going to get in there, blast it out from the inside so I know exactly what I'm working with and then I'll probably weld a plate on the inside um, and weld it up, fill up the hole on the outside so that it's flush on the outside but there's a, a solid plate on the inside as well. Um, we think there might be like a, a pipe or something in there, maybe like a drain bung type pipe. Trying to zoom in on it. Yeah, pull it. Yeah, somewhere up in there we think there may be like a pipe that used to be a drain pipe or bung or something like that, but it's under the water line, so it's only useful when the boat's out of the water. So, yeah, anyway, we're going to deal with that, see what's going on underneath it all. I'm not wasting another minute. If it goes... So we've gone through and put the rust kill on the panels. Here's a good example of what we need to do. So you can sort of see here, there's like a, a film, sort of like a, I don't know, rough sort of bubbles and crap that sort of sits on the surface. I've got a stiff broom, basically just a hard bristle broom, but still, you know, soft enough. You go through and you just give this a bit of a res up and it takes all of the dust and flakiness of it. Um, and then from there we're able to just go through and start doing our painting, but you've got to make sure you get the surface off before you can do that. So with that job complete, Brewpeg's now watertight. This is the first time in four years we've had a hull that's able to go in the sea without leaking like a sieve. So uh, massive thank you to Richard for helping. This was a huge amount of work that we had to get through. Um, it was his expertise that knew about the aircraft sealing. This is the third uh, panel in the hull that he's helped us seal up, so me and him have kind of got it down to an art now. So uh, yeah, really appreciate the help and it's been a really fun ride. One of our Patreons, Greg, has just turned up and he's got a stack of gear <laughs> that he's dropping off to Brewpeg. How are you? Good mate. So I'm moving house. So it's just stuff out of my garage. So yeah, cool. You can either use it or pass it forward. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> yep, hammer drill. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, cool. Welding jacket. Yeah, nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> that's bloody awesome. Thank you. Yeah, mate, you're welcome. So, what's it actually like being on Brookie? <laughs> like in a general way? Yeah. Um, it's physically really demanding. Um, it's really hot in summer. Um, things are not complete, so it's living in a in a work workspace most of the time. Luckily, um, my father was a builder, so I was kind of used to being around workshops and workyards. It's it's a constant reminder of what everything's about because I'm I'm living on the boat. <laughs> it's going to be in the water and hooning at some point to ice. You know, it's um it's amazing. I'm it's it's being completely immersed in something, so there's no distractions. I'm very, it keeps me very, very focused. And in the yard, it's a pretty inspiring environment, but loud, dusty, hot, lots of bugs, people everywhere. <laughs> it's really, really inspiring. You never lose focus. So how are you feeling um, in terms of progress on the boat? Like, how do you feel we're doing for timelines and stuff like that? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. It's like so much work, um, we really, it's kind of a, it feels like a bit like a pressure cooker, but in a good way. Yeah. Uh, Dame and I seem to have like got a second wind, like we're so, sort of more resilient. And, you know, it's, uh, I wake up at four, I get out of bed, I'm editing, the day starts at six, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not effortless, it's tiring, but it's um, we're pretty motivated. Mm, mm. How do you feel the progress is going in terms of the dump and run aspect of what we need to do? 
Yeah, yeah, well we had a few few delays and we were hoping to be kind of getting close to being in now, but um, the project that we uh, are probably going to be a part of got delayed at their end, so it worked out, it actually worked out really okay. But Dame and I are, um, are absolutely like a partnership in this. Um, he's captain of the boat and I'm captain of the project, so um, I suppose I'm, I make all the decisions really the focus of the project, um, what, what we're going to use Brewpeg for, um, the direction of the channel, although it, everything is collaborative, but ultimately it's my responsibility to kind of uh, keep things moving in the right direction, I hope. Dan Dame does, uh, I think he's got a really clear vision about um, the strength and effectiveness of the boat, um, and he sticks to that ruthlessly, um, and we we work together to make sure that we, we keep on track with that because it has to be strong and it has to be really capable. So in terms of projects, Brewpeg is obviously a project boat. What's the timeline that you're aware of for um, our first project? Mm. Our first project is the reef and that's gonna looks like it's going to be a photographic and videography sort of um, expedition. It's, it's really recording what will go you know? um, and we're lucky enough be a boat that's going to be able to do that and we hope to have some uh, you know people who, who really want to do that kind of video work and um, photography work with us but we'll be doing it in Brewpeg style <laughs> but my biggest project in my head is getting on that lift and getting this boat in the water and <laughs> can't wait after we finished the coffer dam we took Mishka to the beach for a walk to get some fresh air So oh.